God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Hey, Melinda. How you doing? Good evening, Mother Angela. God bless you. How you doing? Amen. It's so good to see you all. Just for a few moments, it's been a, quite a busy day. Good evening, Kenyana. Ki, Kiana, I believe it is. Uh, good evening, Brenda. God bless you. How you doing, sister? Amen. So good to see you, Julia. God bless you. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. God bless you. Amen. It's so good to see you all. Just want to take just a few moments um, just to share with you all. Initially, I was not going to uh, come on tonight. I had just finished uh, a meeting not too long ago um, with uh, some of the leadership of the church. And, uh, you know, and, and I just felt sort of like the need to um, just kind of take it down a little bit tonight and, and really to just to rest my mind and my heart, you know, and, um, you know, and to allow for God to, to just speak to me and, and things like that. And so basically, I didn't want to just um, stop with the teaching tonight um, and not to have the teaching tonight. So I just want to share something really quickly with you. Um, and then I want to have prayer with you and then let you go right for tonight. And then we'll pick up part B of the class that we were teaching God's willing tomorrow, tomorrow evening at 7 PM. But I just wanted to take a few moments to just share some things with you. Um, <clears throat> but let us pray really quickly first, um, that the Lord would, uh, really speak to us in these few moments. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for this privilege, Lord God, and I give you glory, honor, and praise for all that you are doing in my life and in the lives of your people. God, we thank you, though we know that as time is approaching, Father, it is your desire that we make sure our election and that, God, we know for sure of our salvation and, Lord God, where we stand with you. For God, we want to hear you say, well done thy good and faithful servant. And Father, you know each of us by name. There is nothing that is hidden. There is nothing, Lord God, that is shrouded. But God, you know our uprising and our down sitting. So Father, even now, I pray that you would open up our understanding and that you would bless our time together. And Lord God, let your will be done in our lives. Bless us tonight. Holy Spirit, grant unto me free flow that your word might come forth with power and authority. And God, remove me out of the equation but let you be seen and heard tonight. We thank you, Lord God, and we glorify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Good evening to everybody. If I did not say good evening to you or if you just came on, just for a few minutes of your time, I just want to share something with you that that just, you know, just really hit me heavy in my heart. And, um, and, and I just want to share it with you. And so it's in Psalms chapter 37, Psalms chapter 37, and, and verse 4, verse 4. And let's, let's read, actually, verse 4 and 5, okay? And so Psalms chapter 37, verse 4 and 5, look at what it says. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. I'm going to read that again. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Okay, now listen. You know, all of us, we have something, right, that we desire, something that we believe is for us, right? Whether it be whatever good thing you're searching for, whatever good thing that you believe that God has for you, right? You have these desires in your heart. You have these wishes, right? These plans. The word of God says a man plans his way, 
but the Lord orders his steps, right? And so we know that each of us have something that we are looking for, something that we desire, something that we believe is good for us, right? That we want, right? Um, and, and it could be material things, it could be relational things, it could be um, experimental things, like things that you want to experience in life. Um, it could be, um, you know, goals that you have. It could be fantasies. It could be plans, dreams. It could be a lot of things, right? But whatever it is, look what it says. Verse 4 says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. To delight yourself in God means to find peace in him, to find joy in him, to find hope in him, right? If you look at Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 14, Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 14, look at what it says. It says, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken, right? So when we delight ourselves, when we, you know, find joy in God, when we say, well, God, you are my all and God, I want to, I want to know you in a better way. And I want to experience you in a better way. When we do that, God, he says, he's going to give you the desires of your heart. Now, oftentimes, when people have read this, they have read this to believe that God is going to give you what you desire, that God is going to give you, you know, well, you want a house, you want a car, you want a man, you want a woman, you want love, you want this, you want that, that God is going to give you what you want. No, 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 that's not what it means. It means that when you delight yourself in the Lord, God is going to give you what you should desire. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. In other words, he's not going to allow you to waste any time. My God, so many of us, we choose stuff, right? We choose things in our lives. We choose, you know, come on, you know how it is. You may think that that man or that woman is a good choice for you. And then after you connect with them, you find out, ah, oh, that's a bad choice, right? Uh, maybe I should have chose better. Maybe I should have listened to my mother, my father. Maybe I should have listened to what wisdom was telling me. You know, you're with this person and you, you trust them for what they say to you, but you don't know if they're telling you the truth, right? And so we're almost like, like what I talk about in the teaching, and maybe this should be a part of the teaching, right? But, but, um, when, when I talk about in the teaching that uh, many of us are out there sampling, we're sampling in relationships. Well, let me try this and let me see if this will work. Let me see if this will work for me. And hopefully I hope and I pray that this will be good for me. Right. And so you sample that relationship. But here's the thing. The word of God says that when you delight yourself in the Lord, he's going to give you the desires. He's going to give you the desires that you need, the desires of your heart, the desires that you can love. He's not going to allow you to love anything that is not good for you. He's not going to allow you to be connected with anything that, that does you any harm. He's not going to allow you to be caught up in anything that's not good for you, but he's going to give you the desires of your heart. He's going to give you what you should desire, what you should love love so that you can love it in truth and in safety and in comfort and in security, right? And and that's not just good for you women, but that's good for us men, right? Because we want somebody in our lives and we want things in our lives that we can trust, that we can adhere to, things that we can depend on, right? We want those things. All of us are looking for those things. He says, the way to get it is to delight yourself in God. The way to get it is to delight yourself in God. And you say, well, well, pastor, if I delight myself in the Lord and I'm not out there, because what do they tell you? In, as far as relationships, they tell you that if you want to meet somebody, you got to get out there and you got to meet somebody, right? <clears throat> you got to make yourself seen. You got to get out there and put yourself on the market, right? Listen, tell them you ain't fish. 
You're not no fish or no raw meat to lay out there for anybody to pick you up. Here's what he says. He says, not only should you delight yourself, but verse five, if you commit your way to the Lord, if you commit everything, to God. If you say, well, Lord, he, here, Lord, you know what I desire. God, you know what I need in my life. And God, bring it to pass. Look at he says, if you trust in him, that's what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So if I commit my way, if I commit everything and say, well, God, I'm giving this to you and I'm committing unto you because I know God and I trust and believe that you're going to bring it to pass, right? If I commit my way to him and I trust in him, guess what? It doesn't matter if I'm hiding in a dark room. It doesn't matter if I don't dress all fancy. It doesn't matter if I don't have all the money, the bells and whistles, or ladies, if you can't get your body 100% together. It doesn't matter the methods that the world has chosen. If you commit your way to God and you trust in him, guess what? He's going to bring it to pass. He's going to make sure that it happens in due season. Our father is not somebody that gives you half-baked bread or, or half-cooked meat. In fact, he's not going to give you no half-man or half-woman. He's not going to give you a half-promotion or a half-blessing. When God gives it to you, it's going to be everything that your heart was seeing, everything that your soul was believing, everything that your mind was understanding from God what he would give you. And guess what? If it comes halfway, you're going to say, that's not it. You're not it. He's not it. She's not it. Why? Because it's half baked. It's half cooked. It's half put together. And I don't know about you. I don't want nothing that's half. Give it to me all. <laughs> what, what the commercial said, it's, it's my money and I want it. I want it all. I want it all and I want it now, right? When we, when we desire something from God, you better know that God is not going to give you nothing cheap. God is not going to give you something that's temporal. God is not going to give you something that, that is imperfect. For he says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Everything that's perfect and good comes from God. He's not going to give you jacked up stuff. Yes, you're right, Virginia. He's going to give you the best gifts, right? Because what did he do? The best gift that he gave you is the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is the best gift. It is the power of God at work in the earth, and it's in you. And so when you commit yourself, first of all, delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in his ways. Delight yourself in his word. Come on. You want to think right? Start meditating in the word. He says, for that word is going to keep your mind. That word is going to sustain you in the midst of the storm. I'm here to tell you that, listen, I'm a person that because of my work with the Lord and because of my service in his kingdom, I'm constantly attacked. I'm constantly ridiculed. I am constantly disrespected. I am constantly people challenging me. People don't like what I say. Oh, you like it when I agree with you. You like it when I applaud you. You like it when I allow you to do whatever you want to do. But when I cut the, the, the water line, when I, when I say no, no means no. When I do that, then I get the attacks. But guess what? God keeps me in the midst of everything so that I'm not frustrated. I'm not aggravated. Guess what? I'm not out of health, but I'm in good health. I'm in good happiness. I got joy that flows like a river. I got strength in my mind and in my soul. My heart is not weary or wounded, but my friends, I am joyful in the Lord for the joy of the Lord is my strength. And guess what? I still go out and do everything that I want to do. And I go out there to have a good time. And everywhere I go, because God is with me, because the Lord is in me, everywhere I go, his peace comes right along with me. So I got folks that want me to come to their house. Why? Because I bring peace in their house. I bring joy in their house. I got folks that want to talk to me about their problems. Why? Because they know that God is in me and Pastor Rodney is not 
not going to give me junk. He's not going to give me bad advice. He's not going to give me advice that's one-sided, but he's going to give me what he believes is totally right. I'm here to tell you, listen, follow me as I follow Christ. If you want half of the things that I got, you need to follow me. And what I mean, I'm not talking about stuff. I'm talking about the stuff that I sleep. Y'all, I don't toss and turn unless the Lord is trying to give me a message. I'm not losing sleep. I'm not frustrated. I'm not aggravated. I'm not anxious. I'm not scared about this time and what we're going through. But God says, Jesus says, the peace that I give is not as the world gives, give I unto you. He says in another scripture, he said, but the peace that I give shall sustain you. It's going to keep your heart and mind. It's going to keep you stable. It's going to keep you established. It's going to keep you on rock solid ground. You're not going to change because of the time. I don't care who's in the White House. I don't care who makes it. I don't care if if the folks that I don't like get into the White House again. Guess what? They're not my God. My God shall sustain me in the time of famine. My God shall keep me. He watches over me both day and night. So I have peace that flows like a river. I have joy even in the midst of having problems and issues around Guess what? I can still smile and I can still rejoice and I can still be stable even in an unstabling time. Listen, I'm here to tell you, people of God, you've got to delight yourself in the Lord, not in the stuff, not in the things, not in the things that you desire. Come on, you know how it is. So many of us, we find joy when we get what we want. We find joy when we get the things that we desire. We find joy when we get the things that we've always been looking for. Now we're happy. We're happy because we got the car. We're happy because we got the house. We're happy because we got the boat. We're happy because we got the child or you got the relationship. You're happy because, you know, uh, maybe you've been trying to lose weight and you lost all that weight. And now you look in the mirror and you like what you see. Right. And now that makes you happy. Right. But let me tell you something. Happiness is not because of that. And, And in fact, God is not here, you know, he's not here to make you happy. He's here to make you joyful because happiness is reliant upon things that make me happy. It's, it's, and yeah, you know, if, if, I get, if I get a bonus or if I get a raise or if I get something good happening in my life, yeah, I'm going to be a little bit happy, right? But that's not joy. Joy is something that doesn't change because of the time. Listen, you could be in my life. You could be my friend. You could be my homeboy. You could be my homegirl. You could be my close uh, sis kumba. You could be my boo, my bae. You could be all that stuff, right? But guess what? You act crazy. I ain't acting crazy with you, right? You want to lose control. I'm not losing control with you. You want to be stressed out all day. My friends, I ain't got time for the pain. Let me tell you something. I got joy that flows like a river. And so a lot of times in order to keep that joy, joy, I got to hang up on a few people. Amen, somebody, glory to his name. If I got to keep that joy, no, I can't come to your barbecue. If I got to keep that joy, no, I don't want to spend a night. If I got to keep that joy, no, I'll take the trip back home. Why? Because I want to keep what God has given me, and what God has given me is based upon my relationship with him. So when you delight yourself in the Lord, when you delight yourself in God, guess what? He calls is for everything to come together. Let me give you a little tip. Those of you, those of you who want to keep your body together, right? (laughs) Those of you who are saying that, oh my God, my body is out of shape. My body is out of shape. I'm trying to get this body together. Don't you know that everything emulates from the spirit? Everything emulates from the spirit. Listen, this is why for some people, all you can exude is sex. Because why? You are exuding sex because of the fact of that you are only allowing yourself to be seen in your sensual way. Allowing yourself to be seen in your sexual way. So that's why when people see you, all they can say is, ooh, baby got back. Ooh, girl, you are hot. Girl, I drink your bath water. Oh, man, you so fine. You so this. That's all you exude is sex because that's the one side that you are, right? So when you look at, when someone looks at you, all they can see, unfortunately, is that you good for a good time. That's all they can see, right? But let me tell you something. When you have the joy of the Lord, 
Lord. They not only see your beauty. They not only see your body. They not only see all those things, but they see your spirit. And it's something about you that, that caused them to say, I don't know who you are, but I want what you got. I want what you have. That's what Peter said to the man at the gate called Beautiful. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And I'm going to tell you, I don't want no crippled people around me. What do I mean by that? I ain't talking about naturally. I'm talking about those of you who want to live a crippled life. Those of you who want to walk in crippled emotion. Those of you who want to walk in confusion each and every day. Those of you who got a problem each and every day, got something negative to say about it. everybody else. I don't want no junk like that. My God, you must. Yeah, Virginia, you right about that. A kingdom woman must have a beautiful spirit. And I'm going to go in further. A kingdom man must have a beautiful spirit as well, because I'm here to tell you, people of God, we have the good news within us. So why can't we smile? Why can't we be happy? Why we need a song to make us happy? You know, why we need a, a, a drummer to make us happy, a musician to make us happy? Why we need stuff to make us happy when we have the God of goodness within? And that's because and sometimes we have to double check ourselves and find out maybe when we think we're in, we're really not in. And so I'm here to tell you, those of you who try to get your body together, Delight yourself in the Lord. And know what happens is that when you delight yourself in God, your body, remember, he said he's going to give you the desires of your heart, right? So if, if if while you're delighting yourself in the Lord, you're delighting yourself in the Lord and you say, you know, I'm not delighting myself in the Lord, but I don't like my blood pressure. Guess what? Your blood pressure is going to come down, right? It, it, I'm delighting myself in the Lord, but deep down inside, I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, you know, help me with my body. Guess what? Your body is going to conform and get into shape. You know, there's a lot of people when they um, meet me, they say, well, Pastor Rodney, what kind of workouts do you do and so like that. Let me tell you something. Half of the time, I don't do any workout. I don't do anything. And y'all, y'all should see my plate. My plate when I eat has a lot of food, right? I eat. Oh my God, I eat. And y'all, let me tell you something. You know, we got some health nuts on the, uh, and no offense, but I call them health nuts. We got some health nuts watching tonight. Some of y'all that strict about being vegans or, or you being healthy eaters or non-GMOs or all of a sudden that. Y'all, let me tell you something. This brother, man, I love ice cream and don't give me no low fat, no this, then no, give me the stuff that I like, right? Um, you know, and every once in a while, I have a taste for French fries, right? I don't really like McDonald's, but guess what? Sometimes I like a little bit of their fries. I like, um, uh, uh, what's what's his name? Uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> it's on the tip of my tongue, Lord. Uh, you know, some of the places that sell fries, y'all know what it is. Oh, Chick-fil-A, my God, how could I, Lord Jesus, how did I forget Chick-fil-A, right? But I like Chick-fil-A's fries, right? And I like the little nuggets, right? And I eat that stuff, right? Right? And and sometimes, guess what? Sometimes I want a bag of chips. Sometimes I want a bag of chips, and I don't want the chips to be no uh, uh, vegan chips with with uh, uh, this is just cardboard. And and some of y'all out there eating seaweed and and all stuff like that. And and all. Listen, look. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't live for food. I don't live for food. However. Sometimes I want what I want, right? And, 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 you know, and I know that these things, you know, uh, you know, and before you get started with saying, Pastor, you know, the stuff is no good for you. It got all this, this and chemicals and stuff like that. Let me tell you something. Some of y'all walking around talking about chemicals, chemicals, this, chemicals, that. But guess what? You, you put, you put plastic things like your bottle of water you you let the water get frozen and guess what that's poison for you some of y'all got you know you got these non-stick pans and that's poison for you some of y'all got the cast iron pans and you don't realize that the cast iron is actually leaking iron into your food right you got if you really want to be strict about it right unless you in the woods you know uh with with perfect wood catching uh fish in an ocean that doesn't have pollution, uh, eating vegetables. Yeah, you might eat these vegetables that's organic, but there's pollution in the air. 
Well, Pastor, I'm using uh, spring water. There's pollution in the air. There's pollution in the soil. There's pollution everywhere, right? And so when you look at that, if you really want to be strict about it, there's pollution everywhere. But my point is this is that you, God will give you the desires of your heart. God will give you the things and he'll tell you. Sometimes there are times that I heard the Lord said, don't take that vitamin. It's a vitamin. Don't take it. And I don't. And there are other times that I'm eating stuff and I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll take a bite. Like the other day I was eating something and I took a bite and my sensory Everything in my sensory said, mm, this doesn't taste right. And I stopped eating it immediately. I stopped eating it immediately. And then I began to flush my system to get even the little piece that I took in, right? So that it doesn't do my body any harm. Keep in mind, this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You think the Holy Spirit is going to let there be a leaky pipe and a, a, a dripping sink and a, a, a twinkling light or a, a short in the wall of his temple? No, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you everything you need to do. That's why we can constantly have joy. We can constantly have peace. Why? Because where Bonita said, yes, Chick-fil-A is anointed. <laughs> it moved the burden and destroyed the yoke. Girl, let me tell you something. You are my kind of sister. Go ahead. Right? But it's, it's amazing, right? You know, there are things, and there's good humor in all this stuff, right? There's good humor in all this stuff. But it is important to know, people of God, listen, the, the freedom that God has given us, the joy that give, God has given us. Paul says, he says, all things are lawful to me, but not everything is expedient. So when we're talking about body weight, when we're talking about um, health, when we're talking about all these things, right? It is a matter of us really listening to God and saying, God, what is it that I should do for this body, for this temple? for this body, for this temple. And then you do the thing that the Lord leads you to do. And guess what? You will find that your body will start to conform to the way you should be. You'll find that your health will be the way it is. Your your pecs will be the way it is. Your biceps, your, your you know, ladies, you know, stuff that shouldn't hang, won't hang. <laughs> You know, stuff that shouldn't spread won't spread because God will manage you. He'll manage you and he'll teach you things. He'll show you that, you know what, today you need to rest. Tomorrow you need to exercise. You need to do this. You need to stretch. And he'll speak to you so that you can be healthy and strong, right? So that you can be joyful because guess what? Why are you joyful? Because not only do you represent yourself and your family and your kindred and all this stuff like that, but you also represent Christ. Christ. And so Christ doesn't want his stuff broken down and beat up. Look at the instruction he gave Solomon to how Solomon should build the temple. Look at the instruction he gave Noah to how Noah should build the ark. That ark wasn't leaking. That ark, everything was organized and put together. And do you think you, the temple of the Holy Spirit, you think God is not going to have you together? So those of you that are suffering with migraines and those of you that are suffering in so many different things in your in your uh, intestinal issues, your blood issues, uh, your legs, your your arms, your joints, your your everything. Listen, delight yourself in the Lord. And he's going to give you what your heart should desire. He's going to tell you, you know, I love ice cream. Oof, love ice cream. Particularly, I love Haagen-Dazs, Haagen -Dazs, or I love Briars, right? Maybe you don't love it, and that's not your thing, then don't criticize mine, okay? But I love haagen -Dazs, and I love Briars, and I love um, the, the ice cream on the stick with the vanilla on the inside, the chocolate on the outside with almonds. Oh, boy, girl, let me tell you something, you know? That's when I can sit there and just pray. <laughs> just, right? I love that stuff, right? But every once in a while, I'll have the ice cream in my freezer and there will be no desire to eat it. Every once in a while. It's like, no, no, you don't need that. You don't need that today. No ice cream today. And guess what? No ice cream. 
There are other days that I'm eating ice cream and I enjoy it. And because this life, woo, Paula, what you said now, what you said. Vanilla Swiss, oh my God, girl, you anointed. That's all I'm going to say, right? <laughs> right? But the Holy Spirit will lead you. The Holy Spirit will show you what you should do and what you should not do. And this is why we can have joy. And so the word of God says, you have to delight yourself. In order to have that, in order to get that, you have to delight yourself in the Lord. I ain't talking about this stuff that we see so often in so many people's lives where you become churchy. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about delighting yourself in the Lord in your private time, in your home, in your sleep, in your thoughts, delighting yourself in the Lord. And he's going to give you your heart's desires. Then he says, commit your way to the Lord, right? Commit everything that you do. Lord, I'm giving it over to you. Lord, I'm trusting in you. Today, uh, this afternoon, I was, was getting so hungry and I decided, I said, let me, let me cook something. And so I started cooking. I said, oh man, this smells good and I'm ready to eat it. I'm ready to eat it, right? And I spoke to um, Mother Angela and I told Mother Angela, I said, uh, I said, yeah, I said, uh, I'm making this food. And she said, well, hopefully you'll be able to eat before your meeting. And I said, yeah, girl, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. And guess what? Wasn't able to do so. It's still on the stove waiting for me, right? And and I was like, I had this meeting. And then after the meeting, I was like, okay, now I'm about to get my grub on, right? And I'm like, I'm going to just post a, a, a text online and tell people like, you know, God bless you. Pastor Rodney is praying. God bless you. I'll see you guys tomorrow to finish the class, right? And the Lord said, nope. The Lord said, go on. And I said, well, Lord, I'm having, you know, I'll try to negotiate with God. You know, right? You know how we do, right? <laughs> we try to, we try to negotiate with God and try to say to the Lord, well, Lord, let me just talk to you for a second, Father. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, Lord, I've been having problems with the electronics, you know, to really get online. So I need to really work on those things. The Lord said, uh-uh, uh The Lord said, use the electronics that you use and go online and open your mouth talk about these two verses and i'm gonna give you exactly what to say y'all let me tell you something i'm using the video that for the last few days have been giving me so many errors and guess what it is working flawlessly right now it is working flawlessly what can i say to you You've got to commit your way to God. And guess what God did? While I'm over here talking to you, I recognize the food is over there waiting for me, right? I recognize that I'm hungry, but guess what? My hunger pains are not taking over like it was taking over before. Because remember I told you last night, it's about crucifying your flesh. It's about crucifying the flesh, getting the flesh under your control, getting the flesh under your control and you being under the control of the Holy Spirit. Guess what? Your flesh can't dictate to you what it wants, but you will dictate to the flesh what you want, which includes not only what the flesh can't have, but it also includes how you want this body to look. My God, help me, Holy Spirit. You can command your body to get in order. You can command it to get in order. Come on, think about it. Jesus went to the person with a withered hand and said, stretch out your hand. And guess what? The hand was restored. Jesus looked at the men who tore up the roof and let their friend down, who was a paralytic lithic, um, on a bed, who could not walk. And Jesus tell him, rise up and walk. And he walked. Peter tells the man at the gate called Beautiful, rise up. And he walked. Jesus goes and touches a coffin. And the coffin of the, per the person that was dead in the coffin got up and woke up. I'm here to tell you, people of God, look at what happened. Not only did you see times where Jesus prayed for people and the disciples prayed for people and the disciples ministered to people and they were healed. But check this out. There's many times in the word of God where Jesus didn't say anything to the person, but the person in their heart says, like the woman with the issue of blood, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'm going to be made whole. And Jesus says, your faith has made you well.
Not, not my touch, not my robe, not the hem of my garment, but your faith. So when you delight yourself in the Lord, God is going to give you the desires of your heart. He's going to give you the desire so that now you can have faith to believe and you can look at that body in the mirror. You can take off your clothes, look at your body in the mirror and say, I command you in the name of Jesus to get in order. I command you and you ain't doing it so that you can be sexy or so that you could turn somebody on or so hopefully you're not doing it for that, right? But you're doing it because you represent something bigger than you. You represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so I don't know about you, back in the day in the Old Testament, right? The Word of God talks about that nobody that was lame, that was dirty, that was broken, that was crippled, that had disease, nobody of that type could ever come into the king's presence. That's why the story of Mephibosheth with David, when Mephibosheth was lame in his legs, and David said, forever you shall sit at the king's table. That's why that was so significant. Why? Because you were not allowed to come into the king's presence unless everything was together, right? So guess what? God takes broken you and I, and God says, I'm going to put my spirit within you. And once he puts your spirit, his spirit within you, do you think God wants you to be broken, tired, and messed up. No. What happened with Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth was lame at his legs. And what David did, David said, you're going to sit at my table. Guess what that means? The problem that Mephibosheth had was underneath the table. It wasn't on top of the table where everybody could see. It was underneath the table. So your weaknesses, nobody will see. Your problems, nobody will see. Why? Because God will cover it. God will cover it and he'll bless you. And then not only did David say, you're going to sit at my table, but David said, everything you need, I got servants that's going to serve you. So guess what? Your legs are now no longer necessary because you're going to use all of their legs. They're going to have to go for you. They're going to have to do for you. They're going to have to serve serve you. You're going to sit at my table like royalty. And that's what God wants to do in your life, people of God. He wants to bless you when no one sees your flaws anymore. No one sees your junk anymore. All your history will be gone and passed. Why? Because you will be blessed and highly favored in God. God says the past is gone when you trust in him with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Listen, you will get through every situation, every trouble, every trial, every enemy that comes up against you. You will defeat them if you would just delight yourself in the Lord, if you would commit your way to the Lord, and if you would trust in him with all of your heart. Guess what? People are going to look at you and say, man, how do you keep it together? How do you do what you do? <laughs> and all you can do is just smile. <laughs> Say, until you know my father, you don't know how to get this. You don't know how to do this. You don't know how to become like this. Listen, you can't manufacture this in the back room and in the closet. You can't manufacture this on the stove. You got to have it in your heart. Because if you have it, then you know you got it. If you don't have it, then guess what? You can't fake this. You can't fake this. There's a lot of people that's trying to fake it. There's a lot of people, I see people sometimes, you know, when they're doing live, right? They don't know that they're on live. So at, face, at first, their, their faces will be like this, you know. And then when they realize they're like, hey, how you doing? Like, you know, now it's like, oh, you're just manufacturing stuff. But when you got joy that flows like a river, when you delight yourself in the Lord, he becomes better to you than food. He becomes better to you than money and riches. He becomes better to you than the friendships and the love and the relationships. He becomes better to you than all those things. And when he becomes that good to you, guess what? He says he's going to give you what you should desire. He's going to give you what desires you should have. And then at the same time, token, guess what? He's going to bring it 
to pass. You don't have to manufacture it. You don't have to push it. You don't have to trick for it. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to uh, submit yourself to foolish things. You don't have to lower your standards. You don't have to do anything. What God has for you is for you, but you must delight yourself in the Lord. Not one time, but continually. Not, not sometimes, but permanently faithfully delight yourself in the Lord commit your way to the Lord commit everything you do everything Lord I acknowledge that you are my Abba you are my father so I commit everything to you so once you commit it to him on a daily basis and then on a daily basis keep trusting in him keep trusting in him he says anyone who puts their trust in him will never be brought to shame Keep trusting in him. And then guess what? He's going to bring it to pass. That's what I have for you tonight. <laughs> God bless you. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for this time of sharing with your people. And Lord God, I pray that something that was said tonight, Lord God, would have inspired them and fueled them and pushed them in the right direction, Lord God, so that they might delight themselves in you, Lord God, that their love for you, that all of our love for you might grow deeper and, and, and further than ever before, Lord God, that, Father, everything in our lives might point to how good you are to us, because, God, you are better to us, to us than we can ever be to ourselves. And so, Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for this word. We want to thank you for this privilege of sharing with your people. And God, I pray for those who have received it. I pray, God, that you would do exceedingly and abundantly above all that they can ask or think and that you reveal to them just how strong you are. For God, you told us that the eyes of the Lord are roaming the earth, seeking whose heart is perfect towards him so that he might show himself strong on their behalf. And so God bless your people and let us shine like the noonday sun. Bless us on every side. Um, heal our bodies. Strengthen our minds. Heal our hearts, Lord God. Give us the joy. Lord God, enhance our complexion. Give us better skin, better hair. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, bless us on every side that we might represent you and represent you well. We thank you and we glorify you. Father, it's in the precious and mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ and our Messiah, we, play, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a blessed and marvelous evening. Like I told you, just a brief moment, uh, really like 40 minutes or so, 42 minutes, 42 minutes, moments almost 43 minutes. And so God bless you. Listen, if this is good to you, share it with somebody else, encourage somebody else with it. It'll also be on my YouTube channel so that those who are outside of Facebook can also partake in it. And so feel free to share it with everybody. I'll put the link on my Facebook page as well to the YouTube channel. But um, for those of you who don't know, my YouTube channel is Smiling Solution. My last name, Smiling Solution, S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N. Um, one word, Smiling Solution on YouTube. And they can see this video as well as other videos that I've posted and other teachings from before. And so God bless you. Be encouraged. Uh, delight yourself in the Lord. Commit your way to him and trust in him. And I'm telling you, he's going to give you the desires of your heart, the desires that your heart should have. And he's going to be the one that brings it to pass. And so God bless you. I love you all with the love of Christ. Have a blessed and marvelous evening. I'm going to get something to eat right now. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Be good. Do the right thing. <laughs> be healthy. Be well. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Have a blessed night.